Alright guys, as you know, the last few of my videos have been sponsored by Skillshare. Today's video is also sponsored by Skillshare. Problem is, whenever someone gives me money... I tend to spend it on silly things. So, guys... Uh, welcome to space. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome to May, where things are starting to get quite light now, and if you're in the northern latitudes like Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, you've pretty much said goodbye to darkness already, aurora season has, has all but finished now, but if you're like me, in mid sort of northern latitudes like the UK, then this is the last month of darkness, in June and July we get stuck in a perpetual twilight, which I'll talk more about next month. But May is the last month with darkness for a while, so it's kind of the best month for us to photograph the Milky Way. The Milky Way core can currently be found rising into the southeast in the pre-dawn hours. It starts to pop up from the horizon about 1am for these mid-northern latitudes, and then the best time to photograph it will be at the onset of astronomical twilight. So the Milky Way will start to get higher and higher, and then you want to photograph it just before astronomical twilight, just before the sky starts getting bright, when the Milky Way is at its highest point in the sky before, you know, it starts getting washed away by the light of the rising sun. So make sure to check the time of astronomical twilight in your local area. For those of you like me in the UK, it's currently about three o'clock in the morning. So the best time to photograph the Milky Way core will be about three o'clock in the morning if you're in the UK or, or a similar sort of latitude. Now, given the moon phases this month, the Milky Way core window starts at the very start of the month at the first and runs until about the 11th when the moon will start taking over the morning skies. And then there are a few days at the end of the month as well. So from the 27th to the 31st, there's a few more days when you can, you can get the Milky Way core as well. And whilst we're talking about the Milky Way, let's not forget the Cygnus region of the Milky Way. So the Cygnus region of the Milky Way is the part of the Milky Way that runs through the constellation Cygnus. I photographed it in my last vlog in Snowdonia, and it, it sort of rises in the northeast just as darkness falls. So it's pretty much out all night. Uh, it's something to do the whole night, and you know, especially if you're waiting for the core to come up, don't neglect the Cygnus region. It's found sort of to the left and up from the core. So it rises in the northeast, crosses the east, and then starts going high in the southern skies. But it's a very bright, very detailed region of the Milky Way. It's also quite colorful as well. There's a lot of hydrogen alpha emission nebula there. So if you have an astro modified camera, uh, you can get some nice pink color there from the North American nebula, for example. The full moon this month falls on the 18th of May, and it's a blue moon this month. So the, the traditional meaning of a blue moon is the fourth moon, fourth full moon in an astronomical season. So an astronomical season is the same to the other seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, but they start and finish on the solstices and the equinoxes. Typically, every season you have three full moons, but every two or three years you will have four full moons in one of those seasons and the third of those four full moons is called a blue moon it's nothing to do with the color blue they think it comes from the old english word belu which means betrayal and it's possibly linked to the catholic clergy trying to work out the the lenten moon the last moon of winter uh, and sometimes you get that extra moon every season so the third one would be the betrayal moon such that the the lenten moon would fall sort of as expected. The other definition of a blue moon, a lot of people know it as the second full moon in a month. This actually comes from a misunderstanding of the traditional meaning of blue moon, which was, um, which was made in an article in Space and Telescope in like 1946. Uh, and ever since then, a lot of people adapted this definition of a blue moon, that the second full moon in a month is a blue moon and it was uh, so widely accepted that it became a trivial pursuit question in like the 80s um, so there's two meanings of a blue moon you get seasonal blue moons and monthly blue moons the blue moon we have this month is a seasonal blue moon as for the planets this month mars is still in the evening skies but it's sinking lower and it's shining at a pretty modest plus 1.7 magnitude it starts the month 
in Taurus and slowly moves into Gemini. Jupiter is starting to rise a lot earlier now. It's rising about 11 p.m. and it's shining at a pretty good magnitude of minus 2.5, so pretty bright. And it's in front of the constellation Ophiuchus, so it's just to the right of the Milky Way core. Jupiter is followed by Saturn an hour or so later, and Saturn is in front of Sag Sagittarius, so it's on the other side of the Milky Way core. So you've got Jupiter and Saturn sort of straddling the Milky Way core at the moment. And then finally, in the pre-dawn hours, you'll see Venus rising just before the sun, and it's shining at a blazing minus 3.9, so you should be able to see it in that morning twilight colour. As for conjunctions between the moon and planets, this month on the 7th of May is probably the best one. You have a nice waxing crescent moon, and that's going to be right next to the red Mars in the evening skies, west-northwest, sort of after sunset. On the 21st of May, a waning gibbous moon will be right next to Jupiter, and then two days later it will be right next to Saturn, so potential to get the long telephoto lenses out there and maybe catch a few of Jupiter's moons as well, or maybe even Saturn's rings if it's orientated that way, I'm not sure which way it's orientated at the moment. Perhaps the highlight of this month though will be the Eta Aquarius meteor shower, so from the 24th to, of April to about the 20th of May, Earth will be passing through a stream of debris left in the wake of Halley's Comet, probably the most famous of comets. Now, because the radium point is in the constellation Aquarius, this meteor shower actually favours southern hemisphere observers a lot more because Aquarius gets much higher in the sky for southern hemisphere observers. They can expect 40 to 60 meteors an hour. In the Northern Hemisphere, Aquarius doesn't really get that high above the horizon, so we get much lower rates, about 10 to 20 at best. And the radiant point doesn't rise until the early hours of the morning for Northern Hemisphere observers, so the best time to view the meteor shower is in the pre-dawn hours, and Aquarius will be rising into the southeast sort of just before sunset, so keep an eye out in the early hours of the morning for meteors and whilst it doesn't sound that favorable for us in the northern hemisphere i mean 10 to 20 meteors an hour at best is not that much but because the radium point is so low on the horizon there's an increased chance of catching something called an earth grazer an earth grazer is a meteor that skims earth's atmosphere instead of sort of directly falling through earth's atmosphere and burning up very quickly it skims the top of Earth's atmosphere and burns up for much longer, much slower, and much, much brighter. I was lucky enough to see one in Turkey about 10 years ago now, and it was mind-blowing. It was four to five seconds of nighttime becoming daytime, this huge fragmenting firework sort of traipsing across the sky from horizon to horizon. People on the beach were screaming in terror. They thought it was the end of the world. And I was just loving it because I, I knew exactly what I was seeing. And that meteor you saw in my La Palma vlog just doesn't even come close. If you get a chance to see an earth grazer, you'll probably tell your grandkids about it because it will be one of the most insane things that you ever see. But because the radiant point of the meteor shower is low on the horizon, there's much more chance of those meteors skimming through Earth's atmosphere rather than falling directly into it. So try your chances. Most meteor showers have a very strong peak of increased activity around the date of the, the peak. And for the Eta Aquarius meteor shower, the peak is around the 6th of May, but it's not as strong an increase as the meteor showers. It's actually quite a broad peak spread out several days either side of the 6th. So even though the mainstream media will tell you that there's a meteor shower on the 6th, it actually lasts like a week or two weeks. So it's worth trying your chances any morning that you have clear skies. And although there's not gonna be that many meteors, the increased possibility of seeing an earth grazer is definitely worth trying your luck for. And that's pretty much all I've got for you this month, guys. Before I jump into the hashtag Wittens, uh, a quick message of thanks from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform and community for creative people with 25,000 courses on all things photography, videography and business. 
There's even a number of courses on astrophotography and astronomy as well, so you can brush up on your stargazing. Members pay a very small monthly subscription fee and they get access to all 25,000 of those courses. In my last few videos, we promised 500 of my subscribers two months free of Skillshare. And there are still some of those places left. They're on the very last places now, guys. So follow the link in the video description and get your two months free of premium Skillshare membership before they run out. Anyway, on to the hashtag Wittens. Last month I asked you guys to send me your photos of you under the stars, working under the stars, selfies under the stars, all of that kind of thing. And there were a lot of awesome entries. Again, it was tough to pick. There's also a lot of amazing moonshots in there this month, so definitely worth going in there and having a look at the Wittens hashtag if you get a chance, but in no particular order. My first pick is from Alex Neil. This gorgeous image of a mountaineer on the peaks of Norway and underneath some gorgeous aurora as well. And Alex is one of my favorite photographers. This is not really a quintessential shot of his, but it does give a good idea of what he gets up to. He's a mountain photographer and he's just started vlogging as well and he's already killing it with the vlogs. Some really useful stuff in there about composition, seeing how he composes in the field. Definitely worth going over and having a watch and, and giving a follow as well. Secondly is this image from Matt Joe's setting up one of his banger time lapses under the Milky Way down under. And Matt is also a YouTuber, I've been following him for years now and he was the inspiration behind the Milky Way hyperlapses that I did in Turkey last year. I took his technique which he shared on YouTube, adopted it and, and sort of adjusted it slightly for, for Milky Way and, and astro shooting. So shout out to Matt, another channel you guys should definitely go over and give a subscribe. And lastly is this awesome image from Jeremy who is quite literally welcoming the Milky Way back to the night sky with open arms and this gorgeous image taken with very obviously a astro modified camera because you've got gorgeous pink color in those hydrogen alpha emission nebula in Rho off Yuki and, and of course Zeta off Yuki as well and that reminds me that I need to make a video about my astro modified A7S II. I'll do that soon. Make sure to smash subscribe if you don't want to miss on that when it does eventually come. This month, I want you guys to focus on the Cygnus region. I want to get some images of the Cygnus region. Let's take a bit of attention away from the core and celebrate this other amazing part of the Milky Way. So that's this month's challenge, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow that link and get your two months free of Skillshare if you haven't yet. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.